Welcome to Lesson 5e, Gaussian Plumes General. We're going to talk about the Gaussian Plume Model, which I call the meat of this course because we're going to spend much time on this, several lessons on this. What is it? It's a model for predicting the air pollution concentration downwind of a smokestack. So this is how we'll model this. We're going to have some point source at the origin. So here's the origin X, Z, and Y is into the page here. And here's a side view and a top view of some smokestack. So we're ignoring buoyancy in this case. So that the smoke is just coming out horizontally and we have a point source. Okay. So mathematically that's a singularity because all the air pollutant is emitted at one point. If you recall from your math class, we're talking about a singularity. All the air pollutant is emitted at a point. That point happens to be the origin in this case. And CJ is infinity there, and then it diffuses. So we have this source, point source, m dot j s, j comma s, or you can just call it sj if you want, which has dimensions of mass per time. That's a point source. And so again, we have the top view and the side view. Let's look at the top view first, and this will be in the y direction here. If I plot the concentration, the mass concentration, you can do this in ppm or mass mass concentration or molar concentration, however you want. We're going to use mass concentration, Cj. It was going to be a Gaussian. Now we're going to derive the equation for this, but for now, just think of it as a Gaussian shape. And then if you go down to the side view, the Gaussian will look similar, except be much more narrow. In this particular case, that depends on atmospheric stability conditions, of course, but there's diffusion going on. So in this case, there's diffusion in the Y direction, and here there's less diffusion in the Z direction. There's also diffusion in the X direction, which it would be this way in both cases. So there's diffusion going on, and what happens is the concentration is still Gaussian, but it gets wider and it gets smaller in magnitude. Again, these have to be the same C if I plot CJ and CJ in this case, it's versus Y in this case, it's versus Z. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have to come up with some mathematical expressions for this and then come up first with an equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is list some approximations and assumptions, A and A. The first one is that it's steady. We'll leave some unsteady terms in when we derive this, but we'll later let it be steady. We're ignoring the boundary layer on the ground, along the ground. So there is actually going to be some kind of a boundary layer like this, but we're just ignoring that because our stack is usually way up high where the U is pretty constant. In fact, not just in the Z direction, but we're gonna let U equal constant everywhere. So ignore any kind of variations in the vertical or horizontal directions here in U, capital U. We're we're assuming a flat ground too, as I show there. It gets more complicated if you have hills or lots of buildings and stuff. No buoyancy for now. We'll add buoyancy later. And we always choose the x direction such that u aligns with x. So before I do any equations, I just want to ask this question. What do you think of this old saying, the solution to pollution is dilution? When I teach this class live, I ask that question and have a little bit of discussion. And what happens is people talk about it. And I think most of you can agree that globally, that's not true because you're putting out the same amount of air pollution. There's an M dot J that's going into the atmosphere, regardless of how fast it diffuses. However, locally, it's a true statement because if it diffuses faster, then the concentration will decrease more rapidly. So the goal is by the time this plume hits the ground, and we're showing a very a short distance here, but that plume will eventually, you can see it's spreading, it'll eventually hit the ground. And people on the ground then will have to be breathing that air that has this contaminant in it. So by the time it hits there, we would hope that this concentration is so small that it's not harmful. So below the PEL, for example. So it's certainly better to emit less in the first place, but suppose we are emitting some kind of a smokestack from a power plant or whatever it is, and we want to predict the concentrations downstream in the direction of the wind. So that's our goal. So let me do a kind of a three-dimensional sketch of this. And what we're going to do is look at some control volume somewhere within this plume. So some little control volume, and we're going to analyze everything coming in and out of that little control volume. There's going to be diffusion and there's going to be advection. So we'll look at all these terms. In this particular case, there's also some buoyancy. So we generally, we're going to get into buoyancy later, but there's some delta H due to buoyancy and there's a stack height HS and then the total height is capital H. So for now, don't worry 
worry about that. We'll add that as an additional part to our equation. So what we're doing is just assume that we have some m dot j, a point source here, and it's just spreading horizontally like I drew in the previous figure. What I'm going to do is draw this control volume a little bit bigger. Here's a magnified view of our little control volume. It has dimensions dx this way, dz is vertical, and dy is that way. And our axes are x that way, y that way, and z this way. You can use your right-hand rule and convince yourself that that's a correct right-handed coordinate system. And so we're going to use Taylor series expansions. This should be review from some math classes you had. We also do this in fluid mechanics a lot. We do Taylor series expansion when we derive conservation of mass and momentum equations. So let's look at these two faces in the x direction facing the negative x and positive x. Suppose there's some property, and it could be any property, we'll just call it B. So if the property is B there at the center of that face, what is the value of B at this other face, the opposite face? Well, it would be B plus del B del X. We use partial derivatives because these are functions of X, Y, and Z times DX plus, then we'll have a del squared B del X squared dx squared over 2 plus etc. So that's a Taylor series expansion. And what we'll do is let dx dy dz shrink to zero. So if dx is like 10 to the minus 6, dx squared is 10 to the minus 12th. And so this term is going to just drop out completely compared to the other term, the first order term. And of course, all these extra ones will drop out. So we just ignore these. So we're only going to do the first derivative term so that we have b plus del b del x dx. And we're going to do that for both the advection terms and the diffusion terms. So let's do a mass balance of species j on this small element that we had sketched. Let's look first at the face that's on the left in the x direction. And we're looking at the middle like I did with that property b. This is our in face. So what's coming into this control volume? We're going to look at the mass flow rate of species j. So m dot j in, there's two terms. This first term is called advection. It's due to the fact that there's a velocity, there's a wind blowing into that control volume. The control volume is fixed, by the way. This control volume is not moving. I should have said that up here. This is a fixed little control volume. So it's stationary. The wind is blowing through it. And so what is the mass flow rate of species J entering the left side of this little box? Well, you can hopefully see that this is correct because it's m dot j in comma x, that's our notation, is u, the speed, times cj, times the area of the face, which is dy dz. That's this area that I shaded here. So we have u times an area, that's q, that's a flow rate, times cj, which we know that cj times q is a m dot j. So that's the advection term. This other term is a diffusion term. And that comes from the 1D diffusion equation that we talked about in previous lesson. And this is the same equation that we had before, just a DAJX with the negative sign, DAJ comma X. Now I put an X because we're in the X direction. Del CJ del X. We used molar before. Now we're using mass concentration, but it's still the same diffusion times an area because the diffusion equation, remember, was a flux per unit area. Now we multiply by the area of the face. And so that's our diffusion coming in. And before I look at the outlet, let me just verify that the units, the dimensions rather, are all correct. So look at the advection term first. We have a velocity, u, a speed, l over t. We have a mass concentration, m over l cubed. We have a dy and a dz, ll. And that reduces to m over t, which is correct. The diffusion term, we have a diffusion coefficient. All diffusion coefficients have dimensions l squared over t. We have a mass concentration in the numerator, and then we have a del del x. Any derivative, spatial derivative, gives you a 1 over l in the denominator, and then dy dz. That also becomes m over t. So first of all, all equations have to have dimensional similarity in all the terms, so that agrees, and it's also m dot j. It's a mass per unit time, so the dimensions are correct. By the way, I call this advection. Some people call it convection, but convection can also be confused with heat transfer convection. So we call it advection in fluid mechanics to distinguish between convection and heat transfer. 
All right, now let's look at the out face. What's coming out? This is where we use our Taylor series expansion. How do we do that? Well, just like I did up here with some arbitrary B, we just, whatever B is, we take B plus del B del X DX. So our B here is the first term, the advective term is this whole thing. So we have that plus del del X of that. And the DY DZ are not functions of X. So I just brought those out. Those actually came out of that parentheses. So that's the first term. And again, we're neglecting higher order terms, so I can cross those out. And then we have the diffusion term, this one. So we have everything there is here, plus del del x of all that stuff and the negative signs in both of these terms. Again, the d, y, d, z came out of the parentheses, and we have some other terms that we ignore, the higher order terms. This is everything coming out, and this is everything on the left side going in. And there's no other terms, so we're done with the x direction. Now let's consider the y direction. And there's no wind in the y direction. It's crossed to the flow. And I used a different color here to type this out. There's no advection, but there is diffusion in the y direction. So this is actually easier because we don't need to worry about the advection term, just the diffusion term. So we're going to set it up exactly the same way we did here, except now it's in the y direction. So we're going to change that to a y, change this to a y. And the area well, now instead of dy dz, we're going to have dx dz. This is the area of the inlet. So this is in and this is out. And again, we're looking at the center of these two faces. So what's coming in m dot j in comma y is negative dajy. The diffusion coefficient dajy, as I say here, may be different from that in the x direction. And then in the z direction, we'll have a different one yet. That's why we put the comma x and comma y. So this is what's coming in. And what's going out, we take that same term as what was coming in. We included the negative sign out here. And then we take del del y of it times dy. The dx and dz come along for the ride. And so this is everything coming out. This is everything coming in due to diffusion. Now, it's a simple matter to do the z direction. I just copied and pasted, changed the color, and changed all the y's to z's. So again, just very quickly here, we have our in, what's coming in to this bottom face. That's in at the center point, And then we're, what's coming out at the top face. So we have an in. I used green color here as our diffusion term. Again, there's no advection since u is only in the x direction. There's no u. All there is is diffusion in the z direction. And so we have that coming in. And then we use a Taylor series expansion, first order, truncated, exactly like we did before. And that gives us the mass flow rate coming out due to diffusion in the z direction. All right, next we have to combine all these together. Remember from fluid mechanics, we had this general equation for conservation of mass, and we're going to put a subscript J on all this conservation of mass of species J in our little control volume. So dmj dt, rate of change of mass within the control volume is equal to whatever's coming in and whatever's coming out. I have that typed here. And since mass of species J is equal to mass concentration times volume, the left-hand side can be written instead since mj is volume times CJ. CJ is just mass per volume. So we can split that up and the volume is constant. So we can take that outside the term. So this V is constant. We just have a fixed little box of dimensions, dx dy dz or volume dx dy dz. So that volume is equal to dx dy dz. So we write dx dy dz dcj dt. And to get the right-hand side, we have to sum up the mass flow rates of species J of all of these. Remember, this is a scalar now, so there's no directions. So all of these mass flow rates from the Z direction, in the Y direction, both in and out, and then the X direction, both in and out, all these terms that I have, we have to put them all together, add them all up, and be careful with our negative signs, keeping all those. Whatever's coming in is positive, whatever's coming out is negative. So we have this equation on the right-hand side of our conservation of mass of species J equation. So putting everything together, and you have to really put your seatbelts on here, like I like to say, this is definitely the biggest equation you're going to see in this course. But I kept everything color-coded, and I don't think I have any mistakes in here. We have m dot J in X minus m dot J out X, and then we do the same in Y and in Z. And I put all the terms from the above diagrams, color-coded. These are coming in X, coming in Y, coming in Z, and then 
coming out X and X member had both advection and diffusion and then coming out Y and coming out Z. Lots of these terms cancel. So this term cancels with this term with the blue arrow, that this term cancels with this term, this one with this one with the orange color, and then the green one, this one cancels this one. So what are we left with? We're left with four terms. We have this term, we have this term in the X, we have this term in the Y, and we have this term in the Z. We have four terms left on the right-hand side. Each one of those terms that are left have a DX, DY, DZ in them, and so does the left-hand side. So that can be crossed off of all of these terms. And when you finally write it all out, that huge equation reduces to this, which is much cleaner. So this is the final equation that we have. We're going to call this the general Gaussian plume diffusion equation. And the last thing I want to do is just label each of these terms. And I want you to be able to look at this and know what these terms are called. So let me just label these and then I'll talk about it. So the first term is the unsteady term. That one's going to go away when we assume that it's steady, actually, which we'll do next lesson. Advection in the x direction, I color coded these as uh, the same colors as we did above. Num term three is diffusion in the x direction. Term four is diffusion in the y direction. And term five is diffusion in the z direction. So next time, we're going to actually reduce this equation to be a little bit even simpler, and then we'll be able to solve it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.